we can see your screen now. Maybe you can put it on presentation mode. Yeah. So yes. it's time, please continue at 6 p.m. India time. Uh, thank you, Tina, for joining. I'm Mukhid from Teach Photography Magazine. Uh, mm -hmm. Over to you, Tina. Uh, go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tina Sokolovska, and I was born uh, in Ukraine, and now I live in New York. And for me, it was quite a long um, way to get here. I'm like um, in photography, I think I'm around 12 years professionally, and I, uh, I can call myself uh, a pro. Um, so today I will share you share with you some tips or my thoughts uh, um, like how to become a successful photographer. Um, so there is so uh, like you can see um, some of my achievements just in case if you never heard about me. Um, as I said, I was born in Ukraine, and uh, many of my clients was uh, like alias celebrities in Russia, Ukraine, and Europe. And I was official photographer of Playboy magazine, and I have contributed to many international magazines, uh, including also Cheese magazine. Um, I thank you for that. And it's how we actually met, uh, like I think three years ago. Um, and then uh, from uh, 2016 to 2019, I traveled around the world with my uh, signature photo trips. And uh, I visited more than um, like 25 countries. And it was uh, really amazing. Like I've been to Maldives, Seychelles, Dubai, Hong Kong, China, Singapore, and many, many, many more. And uh, like in general, my team have shot in more than 55 cities which is pretty amazing. And you can see these shots in my website. And uh, then it was like very important uh, year for me. Um, in December, 2017, uh, in Dubai, I did uh, my the most famous shoot it called On The Wave. Um, you can see it from here, <laughs> this is the picture. Um, and, um, uh, it was featured in top uh, 100 best black and white pictures of the world and Pinterest uh, included in best 17 ideas for black and white photos. Um, and then um, I moved to USA and I was approved for the most prestigious green card type is for extraordinary abilities in the arts. And there is some of my pictures. And of course you can go to my website and see more. You're welcome. You're always welcome to join um, uh, me in, um, uh, in Instagram as well. Um, so what I always say to my students, because I, um, I teach a lot and now I teach, um, uh, you know, like not only um, Russian, uh, Russian speaking uh, students, but also like an English speaking students. So uh, when everyone asking me what uh, the key to success, I always say that it's communication. Uh, I think it's the most important um, quality and important skills you have to improve. You have to, you have to improve your soft skills because it's something that will help you to build up your career. And um, I think it's even more important than talent because if you have talent but you don't know how to communicate with people it will be quite hard for you to you know to achieve some success so uh, what i was saying that um i always suggest my students not just to read um books about photography but uh, first of all read books uh, about you know psychology about communication um, and really like improve your skills and that um, so there is my you know like the the major um, I don't know principles the major thoughts that I can share with you um, what do you have to have 
uh, in your life to be successful. Um, so the first quality, you always have to say yes to life. Uh, it's like in that movie with um, Jim Carrey, when he was wondering, like, every time the life give you opportunity, you have to say yes. And trust me, if, you, if you're lazy enough, it's fine. I'm lazy as well. But every time I push myself to the edge, every time I push myself to do more, um, every time when I'm, I'm wondering, should I say no, yes? And even if, if I want to say no, um, I, I say yes, because you never know where, um, where this the biggest opportunity in your life. So um, my suggestion, the first one, uh, always say yes to life. Uh, the second, uh, be flexible and loyal. Uh, today, um, it's like 21st century, so there are a lot of photographers around. And, uh, you know, you have to... You have to be different. You have to, um, you know, like even I think a lot of years ago, someone from uh, fashion, like from Louis Vuitton or I don't remember, but uh, fr from fashion brands, they said that um, um, very soon um, someone will win who who will give the customer the most, who will give the best service. And this is true, I think, because right now you have to win your client by being flexible, being loyal, being very, you know, like customized. So this is also very important. Uh, the third one, be better than others. Um, what I mean by that, it's, uh, for example, um, you have to analyze your, um, like other photographers, who are, you know, like close to you or near you. And you have to you have to know what they give, like which service they give. And you, ha you have to be better. For example, let's say if um, like um, someone else, let's say like Bob, you, you know, like some Bob and Bob gives a client like 10 pictures, you have to give 15. Uh, or like if someone uh, don't give like extra service, uh, you have to give that extra service. For me, it was like, I always was providing uh, some like outfits, some dresses. I was trying to be better than the others. Um, other one, it's you have to always give more than client expects. Um, what I mean by that, it's, um, for example, let's say for you, it's okay. It's enough. Like your standard is to, you know, to have like one hour shoot and to give like, let's say 15 pictures, 15 edited pictures. Um, and, but, but you can say to client like, okay, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to give you like one hour shoot and, um, you will have 10 pictures and, uh, turnaround time going to be like two weeks, but then, um, you just give more, you do like 15 pictures and, um, you know, you finish your work, like, let's say, um, you know, like five days. So it just make like your your client becoming very loyal and um, you can be sure that he will come back one more time because um, he didn't expect that he was expecting, you know, some kind of um, special like this package that um, you told him about. But if you actually can give some more, you can, you know, like hire his expectations, which is like very cool. And I think it's tip that you have to use in your life. Uh, then I um, I say that you have to offer the ready concept of your shoot. Um, so I I know that you know like many people they um, they text you and they asking you to do you know a shoot and they asking like oh you know like I want to shoot but I don't know what I want exactly. Um, can you help me with that? Can you help me with ideas? And I know that, you know, many photographers just say, um, 
yeah, well, you know, like you can browse internet, you can think, and then you can come back uh, to me. And I think it's not right. Um, as I said that right now, you know, it's um, the market, there are a lot of photographers, so you have to give a little bit more. So I'd say that you have to give the ready concept, like be more involved with dialogue with the client. Um, like, for example, if some family texts you that, uh, oh, you know, you know what, like I want to, I want to do a family photo shoot. And it will be great if you can just, uh, you know, like send some examples, some pictures to your client with like ready concept, like let's uh, say, oh, you know what, I have great ideas for you. We can do that. We, we, we can do that. And it will be uh, nice for your reputation. Uh, then uh, remember that more you do, more chances of success. It's also very important because, you know, like some people think that if uh, they like uh, text it to five clients and uh, no one responds or one responds, uh, it's like, you know, it's failure, which is not. Uh, the trick is just you have to you have to write more. You have to do more. Um, like, let's say, yeah, if you text it like five people and one responded, it's OK. But if you're going to text 50 people, then, uh, you know, like 10 people going to respond to you. So it's bigger chance of success. Uh, also, I suggest you to be, um, you know, innovative and always uh, follow up all, you know, like news in photography and bring this news to your clients. Uh, you have to be fanatic of your, like real fan of yourself and you have to enjoy what you do because if you not enjoy what you do, uh, you're not gonna, you know, do it like you have to do it. Um, you have to sell yourself every minute. Uh, remember that, you know, your, your success, it's part of your life. So even if you go somewhere, like you go out, uh, don't forget to, you know, like, um, introduce yourself, don't forget to, for, for example, um, what I'm using, I put my my work, this one, uh, this picture on the wave, I did t-shirt with this picture. So every time I'm going out with this uh, picture on my t-shirt, everyone is keep asking. And, and, you know, like by that, I'm selling myself every minute. And of course, the main one, be patient. Uh, everything, every success take time. And sometimes it will take a long time. But if you know why you're doing this, uh, it will be okay for you to wait. Uh, and I will tell you like the main steps I think you have to take uh, in your career uh, to build up your, uh, your career, right? So step one, uh, you have to give yourself answers about what you do and what you want to achieve. Uh, first of all, you have to decide for yourself which, um, you know, which kind of photography you're interested in. Uh, for example, like portrait fashion or maybe you enjoy more take pictures of objects. It's OK, but you have to answer yourself very clearly and very honest, because if you will not do, trust me, um, you will not achieve success in something that you're not you don't like. So what I'm doing, what I'm suggesting to do like to my students, you have to take some notebook, open this, take pen, and just write down all your dreams, uh, all your ambitions you want to achieve, all your goals, like answer yourself, um, how much money you want to make, um, like how many years you want to do that, um, what do you want from this? It's very important. So this is going to be step one. Step two, um, you have to start working on your portfolio because without good portfolio, uh, you will not be able to, you know, to do anything. Uh, because first, what client want to see, uh, he wants to see your works and it makes sense. So um, your portfolio doesn't have to include a lot of pictures uh it will be enough like 10 up to 20 pictures it's top um but 
make them really really good like my make them really professional and point to you know like to 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 style that you want to to do for example it doesn't make any sense to show like fashion clients um like you know like your family portfolio so uh, you have to make sure that your portfolio is built up in the right way and uh don't be wor- like don't worry if you even don't have enough experience it's not a problem because right now it's very easy to to do portfolio even if you don't have enough experience uh for example you always can rent some nice equipment uh and even if you don't have your own and you don't have to you know like to wait like 10 years until you save up like 10k for a good camera and good lens you can also just you know go and um rent some for like 100 bucks uh or something and you can shoot in this camera uh, also, you can uh, always find some models in model ag- agency or Instagram. It's not a problem right now. And even if you don't don't know how to work with the light, uh, for example, if you go to a studio, um, you know, people who work there, they know and they can help you. And after that, if you don't know how to edit or how to retouch your pictures or you feel not very um, you know confident in that you can also just hire someone to do it for you and for now it's not that expensive you know like for 20 bucks you can you can have nice um, editing for your stuff so this is my suggestion don't wait until you will have enough experience just start to do your portfolio right and you know like you have just a plan right what to do uh, step three, you have to start to create your client or partner base. Um, it's like, it's very important for your life. You have to focus on, you know, on building up long-term relationship. Um, you have to look more forward and you have to understand why you're doing this. For example, if you, you know, meet some new people, you meet the person, um, first of all, you have to analyze how you can cooperate with, with this person, um, how you can help this person. Maybe, you know, uh, even if it's not just like private photo shoot, but maybe, you know, he works in, um, in some field that uh, you can, uh, you can cooperate with, for example, I don't know, maybe he works in some company and this company needs some uh, headshots or or something like that. It was for me, um, like I met this client and um, she used to work in a gym and turned out that everyone in that gym, they needed some headshots. So, uh, um, you know, I figured out that and I had like 10 shoots for my, um, you know, uh, like it was a great work for me and great money. So um, what I'm suggesting that you have to build up, you know, like big, big, uh, huge base of clients and partners. And your the main task for you going to be not just to have client for one time, but you have to keep them like around you for a long time uh, for many, many other um, shoots and partners. Uh, it's even, I think, more important than uh, clients because partners, it's like you can kill two birds with one stone. Uh, first of all, uh, with partners, you can, you know, you can build, keep building up uh, your your work and your career. For example, like uh, I'm suggesting to have in partners designers, of like, clothing designers um, or people who owns like restaurants, hotels, um, gym trainers, uh, PR managers, um, you know, like people in, um, in some field like with you or uh, let's say stylists, makeup artists, uh, because when you will have to do some work of yours or some projects, uh, you may need this help. And, um, 
it's always nice when you you know like when i was going somewhere in in some other country to do to do a shoot and um um i just uh, you know it was so easy for me i you know i could ask my partners for help like i could ask designers to give me some nice clothes fashion clothes for sure um i can up i could ask for styling i could ask for a lot of stuff and uh this is my other dream partner uh then she did like um you know like fitness tour uh, in other countries, and she took me with her to do shoots for for clients. So always look up more for people like that, people who work in um you know in all fields that you you can be interested in, and um, always stay in touch with them. Like be more than just you know like photographer clients. Like keep not just business. I'd say more keep uh, also a like personal relationship. It's very important. And step four, um, include in your portfolio magazines, celebrities, unique shots, and interesting locations. So after that, when you will start to work, um, you know, and you will feel more co more confident um, about yourself, you can put in your portfolio more like pictures, um, you know, which will make uh, your reputation better uh so magazines and right now you can contribute to many many magazines you can apply you can submit your photos there are a lot of you know like online sub submissions um then unique shots uh, it's like shots for example like mine on the wave uh unique shots uh, will make your name and will put your name on the map of photography. It's very important. Um, and celebrities, of course, because celebrities, you know, like people know celebrities. And if they will see these faces in your portfolio, it will help you a lot. Uh, and instant locations, don't forget that you can travel. And uh, I, um, I highly recommend it to travel because when you, you know, like when you, when you put in, in your portfolio like pictures from other countries, it's also um, helps a lot to see client that you're really good at what you're doing. Uh, so this is like uh, pretty much um, you know like what I um, I like to share with you, and I'm I will be happy to answer all your questions. If you have that one. Yeah, yeah sure, Tina. We do have questions. Yeah, okay, can you repeat? Went live, which went viral on the wave. Could you give in that, like, you had anticipated that photo to be that way, or it was just that you were there at the right place at the right time? Uh, um, it was in the moment, actually. It was a personal photo shoot with my client, and um, I haven't planned exactly, you know, this shoot. Um, I was just on the beat, and I saw this bridge, and I said, "Oh, you know what? Like we we finished already with the shoot, and we can try, um, we can try to do something interesting." And I'm like, "Okay, let's just try. You can lay down, I can go um, on the bridge, and I can, you know, just try to catch some nice shots um, above the bridge." And she said, "Okay, yeah, sure." But then, um, you know, I was taking picture, so my the main idea of mine was just to take some interesting angle and then you know just this water came this wave came and i just shot i just captured this moment it was just one second so uh it was like more more by accident but it turned out very great great and how was your first reaction when it went viral i'm sorry what was your reaction when you realize that this image is viral now oh um uh you know what like um first i couldn't believe myself because um 
it, it was very funny um, when we did this shoot. Um, we didn't even choose this picture in the first place um, for for editing. Uh, so um, you know, when um, I think after like couple months, uh, we were going to Dubai and we we needed some uh, some picture uh, to put in Instagram and say like, hey guys, we're going to Dubai, blah blah. blah. And uh, my client like. My clients say, oh, you know what? Like, I, I like this picture. Can you edit extra this picture for me? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, so I just like, okay, I have, you know, like new editing picture. So I, why not to put it on Instagram? And I put it and uh, I was so shocked. I'm like, what's happening? Like, I, I had so many tags, like so many uh, pages and communities were just like sharing uh, this picture, tagging me. Uh, so, it, you know, like, um, I think I would say that in the first place, I I didn't realize that it's going to be so popular. Okay, great, great. Um, there is a question, another question. Do you shoot any other genre too, apart from fashion? Uh, yes, yes. I should actually. I should pretty much everything uh, with people, um, Reddit uh, events, love story engagement, um, family, like pregnancy. Um, but uh, you you can find this all pictures on my website. Um, I just you know like put it in, in other pages. Uh, but I. Um, um, I define myself as portrait photographer. So uh, on my Instagram page, I just you know like I'm I'm focusing uh, more on on this. But of course, I shoot uh, other one also because you know it's money and it will be very very stupid of me if I will not take this. Uh, okay. Um, another question we have: How difficult it was, or? How challenging it was moving to US because you already had your clientele back home, going to a new city, creating your clientele, and um, you know establishing yourself. So, how was your experience? What you learned from there? Um, it's still challenging. It's very challenging. It's very difficult, and I think I'm. I'm just in the beginning of my establishment here. Um, and I think it will take some more time. Um, I would say, like everyone say that um, it takes around three years to put yourself on the map here. Uh, and I'm here just like year, one year and like three months. So I'm, I'm still newbie here um, and it's still very, very difficult because I'm trying to, um, you know, like rebuild my career for American market and um, American customers are very different from European customers or from uh, Middle East customers or from Russian customers. Uh, but, you know, um, I, I say that um, it just... It's just okay for me because first of all, I um, um, I have very nice soft skills. So everywhere I go, you know, like I bring myself with me. So uh, I know how to do that. And even if you change um, the country for living, you know, the main, uh, like the background of building up your success is the same. Uh, the program is uh, the same, always the same. Uh, as I said, like, you know, the steps. Uh, so yeah, it's like, it, it can be different, depends on the market and on mentality of clients, but in general, uh, it's the same. And if you, if you make it right once, you can make it, you know, like twice uh, and many, many more times just in different country. Uh, another question we have, what is in your gear bag? Like what all you carry, essentials you carry for every show? Um, I, I'm trying to, you know, like to be um, very economy. I, I'm trying to take with me only stuff that I really need. 
Um, right now I have three cameras, uh, but for shoot, I'm taking only one. It's Nikon D850. And sometimes I can put uh, additional uh, new Sony. It's mirrorless camera. Uh, I just got it like three months ago. Uh, you know, just just see what happened. Uh, for me, it's like more. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to explore this new system for me. But uh, for photography, for me, it's still the main camera I have. It's like D D850, uh, and I'm taking like two, three lenses top uh, for shoot. Uh, I can take 24, 70. I can take uh, a 50 uh, or 20, and I can take my favorite uh, 105 with aperture uh, 2.8. Uh, one of the questions we got in different form from a couple of uh, photographers, out of 85, 50, 2470, which is your favorite lens for studio in a studio shoot? Um, right now, um, I'm using 2470 and 105. Um, because you know, like, I, I like, I prefer to do more portraits than full body shoots. And for portraits, uh, for me, um, the best one, uh, I would say it's 105. But if I want to take some full body pictures, I am using 24 7. Okay. Uh, we have a voice question from Vikram. Vikram, uh, please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, how? Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, how do use of? Uh, okay, okay. Sir. How to use of uh, uh, camera lens and uh, other gear in uh, uh, fashion photography? Uh, I'm sorry. How? How? What? Uh, use of lens, camera, and other gears in a uh, fashion photography. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, so uh, his question is, uh, I think just now you answer that what all gears do you use for fashion? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Just the same that I answered before that. Yeah. Yeah. May I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Devjit, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What kind of lighting gears do you use in indoors and outdoors? Um. Outdoors, I prefer not to use any light. I prefer to work just with natural light with the sun. Um, and when I'm shooting indoors, I'm using just speed light with additional uh, small softbox on. Or if I'm working in the studio, you know, you have ready light in the studio. You don't have to bring your, your light with you. Okay, don't you have any preference? Uh, not any. Actually, not preferences. I, uh, I I prefer to work with Profoto uh, Light in the studio. It's my favorite brand of uh, of lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, guys. If you have anyone of you have question, please raise your hand. Next question, uh, we have. How important it is for developing a unique signature style for each photographer? Um, I think it's very important. It's something that uh, you can be recognized for by the clients. And, you know, if you have this signature style. And so it's very cool when people can see just pictures and they can say that it was shoot by you uh, because it's your style, uh, which is very interesting. I I, I cannot say that I, I have, you know, some specific style, but my clients say that they can recognize my pictures out of, you know, others. So I think it's, uh, you know, it, it means a lot. Okay. Uh, another question we have, what's your workflow? right from getting a shoot till the delivery it's so like how do you plan everything and what step what all you do um first of all i'm um 
I'm talking to my client. I'm making agreement. Um, so we make an agreement. I'm sending, um, you know, a contract. Um, they they have to sign. They uh, send me a deposit, and then after that, we started to uh, talk details. I'm I'm helping them with idea. You know, like um, I'm planning um, everything. Um, like makeup, hair, outfits, locations. Um, I'm thinking about ideas. I'm trying to find um, in internet some pictures, you know, like of we, which we can um, use like for inspiration. Um, and then we do shoot. And after shoot, I'm, um, I'm editing pictures. Uh, it depends. Sometimes client uh, choose the pictures. Sometimes I choose the pictures, and then um, I'm just sending link. So um, I'm just given, you know, like in digital all pictures with the link, uh, and that's it. Um, one more question we have. Thank you, Tina. Um, mm -hmm. Another question is, uh, what software do you use for Post processing. For what? For post processing, for editing, and um, how much typically you spend on each image? Um, uh, it depends on uh on the picture. Uh, if it's you know just regular one, full body, it will not take a lot from me because, uh, as I said, I'm you know I'm doing this for twelve years, so my skills very you know like i'm very fast in this and uh, it will take for me like maybe 10 minutes uh but if we are talking about you know like close up about uh, about some you know like portrait uh i would say like close to half an hour uh for one picture and i'm using a tablet uh, for uh, editing it's uh you know like it looks like this so i'm I'm editing all my pictures with with this tablet. In which brand this is? Is it a Wacom or some other brand? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's Wacom. Yeah, it's Wacom. Okay, great. Um, we have Rajiv. Rajiv, please go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Uh, good morning, Tina. It's a great opportunity speaking to uh, looking at the, all your work and given an opportunity. I'm new to uh, fashion photography, so I need an advice in terms of uh, what kind of uh, uh, fashion photography I should concentrate. It's more of indoor or I should go for outdoor shoots to start with and then go for indoor. I had a session with Keys and I have attended their indoor um, studio workshop and it was a great help. But if I want to grow further, uh, what is the opportunities or what uh, the um, steps I need to take care before I go for uh, to build my career on fashion photography? Thank um, you. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, I think you have to you have to analyze your market, uh, your local market, uh, like exactly in your city, uh, which is more like what more uh, popular indoor shoots or outdoor shoots. Um, if it's like more, you know, like people want more outdoor, I would say you can start from outdoor uh, and, you know, like just to start to work with natural light uh, and then you can go to studio because it's two different uh, you know Fine, like two different, two different styles uh, mm -hmm. and um, studio it's very very important if you want to work with like magazines uh, they require more to do studio shoots uh, but if you want work more with like private clients and uh, to do some commercials, uh, you, you have to focus for outdoor. Um, I would say that uh, it's just, you know, like studio and outdoor, like indoor inside the venue. I don't think that right now it's very popular. It's very trendy. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, one more question. 
that can you give some tips on lighting like little more insight your experience some suggestions mm -hmm. on lighting? uh in studio light or uh outdoor uh indoor studio lighting studio light. um yeah um so first my my tip that i can give that try to not to use a lot of uh, uh, lightning like you know i can see that sometimes uh, new photographers they're trying to um you know to use like as many as possible uh like let's say five six lightning and uh it's horrible <laughs> i think that uh, you have to um you have to work you have to um learn how to work with uh, one the main light the key light and i like to use beauty dish for for main light for for uh, portraits it's very great uh one of my favorite um lights him as rembrandt light when the light uh, standing 45 degrees um to model so it's like like that um and you can you know just you can play with the slide uh just try to take this beauty dish and to put in different positions in front of model and then you can add some more light to see how you know picture changing um you know like you can use you can put more light to background uh, you can put some more fill light uh, if you want to take full body shots um so first i say that try to keep it more like natural don't use too much light remember then um exactly uh playing this play between shadows and lightning uh makes you know like your your picture looks great because when it's too much light uh it doesn't make any you know like good looking picture uh, great, thank you. Uh, another question we have, who is your inspiration? Um, my inspiration is travel, honestly. Um, I don't have any inspiration in, um, if we are talking about people, um, you know, I can, I can be inspired by some, um, some pictures, not people. Uh, and for me, the best inspiration for me is just new places and travels. Uh, we have another question. Uh, this is from Alok Chattopadhyay. He is available on voice. Please go ahead. Alok. Hello, am I audible? Go Hi. ahead. Ask your yeah. question. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to know you as you uh, uh, told that during outdoor shooting you do not use any light. I'd like to know at what time you prefer shooting uh, in the in outdoor because as you know in India and other places the light condition is a bit different actually. In India at what time it is your suggestion to uh, shoot the outdoor photos? Mm -hmm. So uh, it depends also on. Um on the place and location I'm in, for example, uh, when I was in Dubai or, you know, like in Middle East or in islands, it's one time. If I'm in New York, it's other time because uh, the light in different places very different. For example, I know that, you know, like here, like the best light around like uh, 7, 7.30 a.m. Uh, in uh, in Dubai, it's like 6 a.m. So you have to, what I suggest, you have to, um, you have to download your application. It, it's called uh, Sunrise or sun, Sunset and Sunrise. Um, you can see uh, this application will tell you exact time of uh, sunset and sunrise in exactly location where you are. Uh, but of course, like the best light, it's, uh, you know, like golden hour. It's hour before sunrise. It's uh, uh, hour before sunset. Uh, but um, 
I can shoot in any time. I can shoot you know, during daytime. Uh, I'm just trying to shoot, uh, you know, against uh, the sun, not to use uh, direct uh, sun because it will be very, very, you know, like um, hard uh, shadows and uh, it will be not good looking on your pictures. Uh, so you can start from like uh, morning time before 10 a.m. and after 4 p.m. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, how is your team structure? Like how many people you have and who all are they? If you have a team of... Uh, if um, yeah, I have team. I have um, makeup artist. I have... Uh, so my makeup artist, she's doing um, in makeup and hair as well. So I'm killing um, two birds with one stone, and uh, it's really great. Um, I have stylist for outfits, uh, and sometimes I can bring my assistant or I can bring videography as well. Uh, okay. And another question is, like, how is your experience working for any luxury suits, for any luxury brands? how it is different from your regular fashion work um um it's it's different but um it's not that different i think i'm you know like for me all my work i'm doing it's pretty much the same because i'm focusing that everything what i'm doing it's my work it doesn't matter what i what i work uh, for or um uh, you know what i'm working like what I'm doing exactly like I'm working with celebrity or I'm working with like, you know, like luxury event or I'm working with just regular client. For me, everything I'm doing is the work and I'm trying to uh, put, you know, like the same um, quality, the same, um, you know, like level of work. So I'm, I'm not making any difference. I'm just doing my work, you know, like nice. Okay, so we have 15 more minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone has a question, please raise your hand. I have many questions from the chat window. We, we would not be answering the part which is already covered in this presentation. The recording will be available on our, our YouTube channel, so you can review, you can go through that. Um, Another question is like, had you not been a photographer, what you would have been? Mm, I think if I wouldn't be a photographer, I would work in um, interior designer or something like that. I really like, um, you know, like all stuff uh, with decorations, uh, and I think it's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we have a, another question from K. Jan. Uh, please go ahead and ask your question. Or Rahul Photography, please go ahead and ask your question. Rahul. Hello. Please go ahead. Hi. Yes. Hello. Yeah, hi, yes. hi. Hello. Uh, I'm just want to knowledge of the lighting and different types of settings. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Lighting what? Uh, the part of that is already answered, Rahul. His question is like, what are the different type of lightings, especially what you use? You already mentioned Rembrandt and a couple of different lightings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can go through the recording and uh, you would have an answer to this question uh, because we have short time. Let's not repeat it. Uh, Kajan, Kajan, please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible? Please go hey. ahead. Yeah. yeah, hi Tina, my question here is, so you prepared a concept and based on that you click some photograph, but uh, then later you come to know that somebody, some other person or some other uh, fashion uh, photographer already clicked in the past and then they, uh, they come to you claiming that it's a plagiarism. How do you handle it? Because you didn't do it deliberately. 
Oh no no no! What I'm saying, I've never, I've never used some other ideas. Um, I'm, I'm never copied something. I mean, we can use some, you know, like, uh, just like for inspiration. Um, for example, it just it's basically more for my clients because they have to see something and you know like in front of their eyes because for me like i i have everything in my head but i need to explain it somehow to my clients so for me it's more uh for example like uh like we're talking about pose right um like i can um i can sit in my head but for me it's more um easier to show my client like picture was you know like similar pose or something and say like oh like you can you can use this pose or like oh look there is like hair looks like great we can do something like that or uh, from this picture we can take you know like the idea of makeup or something but but, but i never copy someone like uh, someone else ideas no <laughs> um thank you um guys please raise your hand make sure there is no background noise and your internet connection is stable um another question we have uh hi tina i am a final year media student i am planning to invest my like i'm planning to get into photography um and the question is like, what should I invest in? Like, is it investing on the gears, investing on the skills or investing in the marketing? It's a very important question. Mm -hmm. Three teams are there, marketing, investing in gears or investing in skills like training and all. So uh, first, yeah, it's, it's a very good question. Um, so I would say that first of all, you have to invest in yourself and your skills. It's the most important stuff because no matter what, you will always have yourself with you. You will always have your skills and it's something that no one can take it away from you. Uh, so it's priceless. So always invest in your skills and yourself. Uh, the second, uh, you can invest, of course, in in the gear, uh, in equipment. Um, you have to have good equipment, but as I said before, uh, you still can make some stuff and without good equipment, right? Uh, and the third one, uh, marketing. I think it, it, it will go on the last, uh, you know, step because if you do nice your work if you do really great trust me um you will have clients even without putting your money in in marketing like additionally uh you know nice work will do everything by itself uh people will talk about you people will suggest you to each others so i think it's like less necessary okay um thank you uh we have another question. Have you ever used speed light? Yes, I'm using speed light. Yeah. Um, can you elaborate a little bit? I'm sorry? Uh, could you just give more idea which is speed light you use? Do you use in a combination with other lights or just the speed lights? Uh, just. I'm using just a speed light with, you know, like small soft box. I'm putting this small soft box on the speed light and I'm using my uh, synchronization. Um, so I'm not putting speed light directly on the camera. I'm holding it uh, in my hand um, so I can choose the right angle I want to point my light on or I can put it, you know, like on a, um, like somewhere, um on um on tripod um but uh, yeah like if you have money to get like more speed lights you can get like two three and you know it will it will uh, give you more um you know like fancy more uh area to work but i'm i'm okay with one my top two speed lights uh, okay Um, uh, 
Uh, have you visited India so far? I'm sorry? Have you visited India? Oh, no, I want, I, uh, I really want to go to India. I was close to India. I was in uh, Seychelles Islands and Dubai. It's pretty close. But uh, yeah, I hope to visit India soon. Okay, you're welcome. Whenever you are here, we would try to do some for you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, next question we have from Ahmad. Um, do you use mood boards? And if you could elaborate on that, how do you use it and the benefits? Um, yes, sometimes I use mood boards. Um, I'm using it more for you know, like very serious, uh, complicated shoots uh, where a lot of people involved, so everyone uh, can know, you know, like have structure what we're doing. Um, so if we have that, if we have like you know big. Um, big team, uh, so yeah, like I created uh, mood board. Sometimes I'm 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 doing this, you know, like with um, makeup artists, um, and we're looking for some nice, um, you know, like inspiration ideas of, um, for example, let's say like on this picture, we like how the hair looks, you know, on the model, or in other pictures, we like. Um, the style of makeup or we like the uh, outfit or we like the pose and we can you know just like put these puzzles together um, and use it but uh, for personal shoot I'm not using mood boards uh, okay thank you we have another question when you started your career did you work as an intern um I started like my um, my very first paid job was I was a photographer in nightclub, and the first months I was like kind of intern. I was uh, yeah just like trying to catch up how uh, the main photographer uh, he was working and he was teaching me how to do special like night lightning uh yeah so i would say i i was intern for like months but then uh, i started to work you know like on a on a full time okay uh, another question is about your home country how is photography in ukraine and how it is different from us um, you know, it's very interesting question because um, I'm finding Ukrainian photographers are uh, one of the most talented people in the world. Honestly, like trust me, I I I have been to so many different countries. Can say for sure that the most talented like Russian Ukrainian photographers. Um, I don't know why is that. Uh, maybe you know it's like in our mentality. Uh, but here in the US, it's very different. Um, photographers here are more like simple um, and not that creative. Not that uh, you know, like they don't have so much skills. Um, and clients here are also different. They not require so many. They don't have so many requirements maybe that's why um you know like photographers don't want to be you know like very great um because like clients in my country they force you to be better better and better and what i what i can see here that all like you know like all americans they want to hire more European, Eastern European photographer and then American because it will be, you know, like much cheaper and the quality will be much, much better. Okay, great. Um, we have one uh, voice question from Devajit. Uh, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, Tina, uh, uh, may I know uh, which gear you started with and uh, may I know the story of uh, gear upgradation? Um, I start with uh, Nikon D8, uh, uh, D80, I think, or 70. I don't even remember because it was very, very long time ago. Um, but it was like, you know, like not professional camera. It was sort of like semi-professional. Uh, 
but then I I got Nikon Nikon um, D three hundred. Then was Nikon D seven hundred, and now I'm with Nikon D eight fifty. Okay. Nikon. Okay. Uh, I have a very interesting question. You ended up at Playboy. How yeah, you, were, mm -hmm. you were selected and recruiting process there? Because it's a, I, I think most of fashion photographers dream to work with them. Um, and how you are experiencing it? Uh, so the producer of Playboy, she texted me, she found me on Facebook and she invited me to work with them. But it's not that, like, you know, it's not like the dream job. <laughs> it's um, it's good for, you know, to put some goals and to do some work, but it's really hard work. Um, it's not that, you know, like, uh, f I mean, for example, for me, after two years working, I don't want this anymore. It was for me enough. It's very, it's very difficult work, and uh, it's very stressful, and it's not that well-paid job. Um, so I would say you can go just, you know, do couple uh, like covers just to put in your portfolio, but. I don't think that it has to be the main goal for you, you know, to, there is so many more other goals to achieve in photography than just, you know, to be a um, photographer in some medicine. Okay, uh, great. Um, another question we have uh, from Sunil, that when you come to India, any possibility to do the workshop? And the second question is, do you do workshops in us currently uh yes i do workshops i do workshops a lot uh right now during to uh situation with virus uh we're not doing anything everything is shut down uh and we on on the pause uh but yeah i will i'm gonna do after and of course i'm planning to do in india and if you guys uh down to do this with me uh i think i will come to india and we'll do workshop for sure uh, sure, we would love to have you on board. It's been uh, three years we came in touch first time. And um, thank you very much. I have another question. Like the picture behind, uh, which is displayed right now, the model in a yellow dress. Mm -hmm. What is this location? It looks so good. Um, it's it's Greece. Uh, it's a magical island, Santorini. It's one of my favorite places to shoot. It's amazing. Um, we we have to like we we went there like for three four times, I think. And um, yeah, it's it's like locations. It's you can Google it, Santorini, and uh, these dresses we took with us. So the model just standing on the rooftop of um, of some building, and uh, it's not Photoshop. It's for real. It's like big, big dress and um, the rooftop. And if I remember when I saw your work, we published in our magazine. Uh, this some of the images were in other bright colors too. If I remember, one of them is in blue and red as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have different colors. We have uh, red, blue, uh, many, many more. Um, yeah, and uh, that one I published. It was from my first year, and after that, I uh, you know like I've been three other times there. So I have other shoots. I have other dresses. Yeah. Uh, so you do pre-plan everything before going there, getting the dresses. You know the ambience, you know the background. So yeah. you pre-plan, get the dresses. Okay. Great. Yes, I'm, I'm. I'm preparing before, of course. We are. Uh, we are hiring special tailor. She is. Uh, she's doing um, dresses for us. We're buying fabrics, and uh, she's doing dresses like we drawing like which draft we want to see she's doing this for us and we're planning everything we're looking up for locations and then we go and we shoot um uh, by the way uh was it for some personal shoot or was it for some brand um it was a personal shoot uh, okay 
Um, we have another question from Prakash. Can you suggest some study material or some YouTube channels which I can follow to become a successful fashion photographer? Um, I don't follow any, but you can follow me. <laughs> I also put some nice uh, educational programs. Um, but honestly, like I, um, I would love to suggest if I would know, but I'm not following any, honestly. Okay. Sure. Uh, we do, uh, guys, to everyone, we will share Tina's uh, handle as well. So, Tina, are you active on uh, mostly on Insta or are you still on uh, Facebook too? Oh, no, only Insta. Like, I, <laughs> I can't do Facebook. I don't know why. I'm just, I can't. Um, so, yeah, mostly I'm on um, Instagram and you're welcome to join me in Instagram or my website. Sure. So I'm sure you must have started with Facebook. So when you realize that you need to move from Facebook to Instagram? Uh, actually, I started from Instagram. Then I, I tried to be on Facebook. And after that, I, I still <laughs> stay in Instagram. <laughs> okay, okay. That's interesting that you started with Insta first. So guys, you can have a look. Uh, right now her page is open there and her iconic picture is there as a uh, profile picture mm -hmm. so please you can review and uh, please do follow uh, we have multiple questions how do you do your pricing strategy being competitive as well as not to lose the work uh price yeah how to, when you quote to your customers mm, right now um my price is very average um i'm just you know like i did research um other photographers to see how much they charge and i put pretty much you know like the same that's it so it just it based more on location. Like in Dubai, my price was more uh, because it was different clients uh, and different markets. Right now, it's right now my one hour of my work is for fifty dollars. Uh, currently. Yeah, for fifty okay. per hour. Mm -hmm. Four hundred fifty US dollar per hour. Uh, yeah, it's four hundred uh, four hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is another question like now, videography is also kind of becoming very popular. Uh, do you, what's your thought on that? Do you see the transition like from Facebook to Insta, the similar way? Or do you do for uh, videography too? Um, I just started, honestly, I'm taking this, uh, first small steps into videography it's very interesting for me um and i think uh i can do something in that that's why i i bought this new uh, mirrorless camera um a couple months ago but i'm still you know like i'm um i'm just like kind of doing it just for myself um so let's see what happened right now i'm doing this my first uh, video project uh, it's called backstage where I um, you know like I do videos of uh, people who works um, on uh, backstage with famous people for example uh, my first video I did was uh, the stylist of Madonna and you know like I interviewed him about work and then it was nail uh, master of uh, Jolina Jolie uh, and all the most famous um, uh, stars here in Hollywood. Uh, you're welcome also to check it out. It has, uh, you can find it on my uh, web, on my website. So yeah, I'm, you know, just, I'm trying to, um, to see what happens. Um, yeah, I can see myself uh, doing this more professionally in the future. Okay, great. Uh, there is a, another question. Uh, when you are moving to uh, uh, US, any specific region moving to New York in 
like you must have considered some other cities like Hollywood or some other cities for the fashion. Mm -hmm. um, so the main cities uh, in US for like for work in photography, are, it's of course, it's Los Angeles and New York. And, um, you know, like New York is just more, I think it's more opportunities to work in a fashion. Um, but personally, like for me, I prefer Los Angeles uh, to live in. But right now I cannot, you know, like I cannot move right now. So I'm just, you know, going back and forth. I'm um, I'm going to work and visit Los Angeles. I'm coming back here. Uh, life in New York is very tough. Like before that, I thought that New York uh, is it's my dream. But right now, when I live here, I I'd say that I prefer to live in Los Angeles and to come here for work. Okay. Um, thanks. Uh, we have another question. When you shoot for brands, personal shoots, or for editorial, is there a difference in shoot when you do it? Uh, of course, because first of all, you work like uh, when you work with brands, when you do some kind of campaign, uh, you have to remember that your client is the brand. Your um, like the model. Uh, it's not your client. It's uh, you know like your coworker basically. Um, so it's uh, it's different because when you shoot brands, you have to shoot what your client wants to see and bring up you know also like some uh, kind of your vision. Uh, but uh, when you're doing personal shit, your boss is, uh, you know, like the model, the client. Um, so you have to be focused more on uh, what she wants to see, what she likes, uh, because your your goal is to satisfy your client, uh, the model. And with the brands, it's more, uh, I think it's more area to fantasy, uh, to create, uh, to like to do some um, uh, creative stuff uh, because it's more about fashion. Um, okay. Uh, I have a question. Like, I'm a, uh, like, I want to make my career in fashion photography. Is there any opportunity available with you as an intern? Do you hire intern? Um, yes, I hire intern, uh, and I, um, I, I had some interns from different countries. And of course, if you are in your ass, uh, text me and we can talk about it. Okay, great. Um, we have a question. Do you use presets while doing post processing? Um, mostly no, very, very like rare. I don't like presets. I like to, you know, like to work with every picture, uh, separate. Okay. Another question we have, thank you. Uh, another question we have, apart from your wave image, which is the mo shoot which is most close to you? Like you think that that is one of the best you have done? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I don't know. It's, um, it's hard to say because it's, it was so, you know, like so many different, uh, pages in my life, uh, so many different countries. Um, I like to work, like I love my works with celebrities. You can find it on my website and my portfolio. Uh, but I cannot choose like, you know, some specific uh, shoot for me. It's very difficult. I love my all, all my, my, my works. <laughs> OK. Uh, the next question is related to celebrities. How your experience had been working with these celebrities and how difficult it is to approach them? Um, it's difficult from one hand. Uh, from other hand, not that difficult as many think. Um, 
you have to be you know like as i as i said you have to have like um nice soft skills you have to know how to communicate with people and you have to be high pro because mostly celebrities don't have time and you have to be very fast very quick you you have to know what you do and sometimes you have just like five minutes to do shoot and it's very stressful situation when you know like um she's very busy and uh you have to catch like shoot you have like two minutes to you know to point light uh to do all your settings and to shoot Uh, So it's very, very stressful. Plus, you know, you have to, sometimes you have to follow them in different countries. Uh, It's also very stressful. Um, But uh, in general, it's pretty cool. I like it. I enjoy it. Um, I'm doing this because, you know, um, it's very nice to to know that uh, people like that, they appreciate you. uh, They treat you well. And uh, it can it can tell you that you're a pro. You can feel like a pro. Uh, okay. Um, any if anyone has a question, please raise your hand or type it. Um, another question we have is: Do you use any filter? No, I don't use any 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 filters. Uh, okay, not even ND filter for production. No. no. Uh, okay. Uh, we have one another uh, repeat question about the lightings. Why a pro photo is your favorite brand? Um, because it's really it's, uh, it's high quality light. It will it has big um, you know like. Um, area to work it's very different from cheap light uh because it has like um i don't know how to say it in english but it it give you more uh, area of colors and lighting so it makes your photos look uh, much much more uh, like great uh, and it's different quality if you compare with just cheap light and Profoto it's like very high quality uh, brand which will help you uh, you know like to do great shots. Okay and I have multiple questions about the gear which you have shown uh, some of them they don't know the name the Wacom we are talking uh, mm-hmm. the- um, could you just give more details why you use it what are the benefits how your head experience had been like how the productivity it has uh, helped you in the productivity in the post processing and does it replace complete uh, your mouse uh, yes I don't even have mouse so I'm using only uh, this tablet and I'm using uh, tablets for like for 10 years for sure. Um, and it's very different. It will um, make you work much, much more easier, more productive, more professional. It's uh, uh, way much easier to work, to add pictures with this uh, stuff than just with a uh, mouse because you will never do uh, this soft and right, um, you know, like handwriting with um, with mouse like I'm doing with this stuff. Um, so I'm like, you know, like I'm an artist who, who can, you know, like do picture. Um, so I, I highly recommend it to work with this. Uh, it's my my model calls Vacom Intos Pro. Uh, okay. And that's really interesting to know that you don't have to use mouse. And- yeah, because this my mouse, it, it works like mouse. So you can do everything like what you do with mouse, but with this. Okay. And how long you had been using this Wacom? Uh, 10 years. Seriously? 
I mean, different ones. I'm I'm okay. I'm buying new ones, new models, but uh, the brand I'm using for ten years. Uh, by the way, whoever wants to buy it in India, you can contact us. We can connect you to the directly to the walk home, or you can buy it from any store. Uh, it is pretty much available, and like you, whoever they are using, they are. They, we have a great reviews about walk home. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Tina, for that. Uh, Tina, we have one more question from Devajit. Uh, Devijit, please ask your question. Uh, Devijit, yeah, can, uh, can you, you hear can us? Hear, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What makes you think that you should take a picture in monochrome? And what makes you think that uh, you should take a picture in color? Uh, it just depends on my, um, you know, like on my visual, my mood. Like I uh, sometimes I just do two versions. Like I do color and I do monochrome and just compare and see which one I like more. And that's it. Okay, uh, another question we have, do you shoot in RAW? Yes, I shoot only in RAW. Okay, no JPEG at all? No. Okay, another question is like, when you do the black and white images, do you visualize or do, do you make them in camera or after taking while post-processing you realize that this is the image, maybe it will look better in black and white? Uh, yeah, I I should always in a in a color, and I do all my black and white pictures after like uh, when I'm when I edit in this. Okay, um, uh, Tina, I guess uh, we have one or two more questions. We will be taking it, but uh, I think it's time we have covered most of the aspects of your photography. Mm -hmm. uh, before we sign off, anything would you like to add uh, to the people, those who are uh, looking career in fashion photography? Um, I would say that um, don't be afraid. You have to um, like practice. It's everything. Uh, you have to improve your skills every day. You have to shoot every day. You have to edit pictures every day. Um, it's something that uh, take time to be pro. And it's just, you have to understand that it's skills. It's not like, you know, like talent. I didn't wake up and I started to make, you know, like great pictures. It took for me uh, many years. Uh, so main advice, be patient and always improve yourself. Okay. Um, thanks. Thank you very much. And for everyone, recording of this session will be available on our YouTube channel. We will also share you some certificate of participation, which you can claim uh, while going to our website. Uh, you need to submit a proof that you have attended. Uh, during this time, we we request everyone to donate to the Prime Minister Relief Fund for the charity. This event has been possible it, uh, because Tina agreed to be on on the show, and this is available uh, without any cost, free to everyone. So, as, as a gesture of appreciation, we would request everyone to donate uh, to the Prime Minister Fund. If you have any question, feel free to contact our team. And that's it from our side. We will look, we'll see you tomorrow again for another session. Uh, thank you, Tina. Like, sorry, we you had to be awake too early uh, for this <laughs> session. It's our time. It's fine. My pleasure. Always feel free to text me in Instagram or my website. Sure. And it's really good to know you for last many years. 
we yeah. had published you several years back in one of our magazine yes yeah. i love you guys and i hope to see you soon be yeah. safe and you too because you are in new york right now yeah. that's uh, one of the you know the place where uh, the situation uh, everywhere the same situation but new york is one of the highlighted area so yeah. hey, Trina, and uh, looking forward to see you in india host you in india yes. thank uh, you so much. Okay, uh, thank you everyone Thanks, thank you Trina. see you soon bye, bye.